yes, it's true. I could tell you that this guy has has been on who knows how many albums that have sold millions and millions of dollars of records. He's literally a rock star. It's true. But I could also tell you that he's built multiple businesses that have done multi, multiple, multiple, multiple millions. Welcome to Digital Genius Radio, the number one podcast focused on guiding you to becoming a certified digital genius. We believe you can have it all by mastering social media paid advertising. We spent the last three years studying the most brilliant marketers today and applying their techniques. We've broken free of the nine to five and successfully built a seven figure online certification platform. From working with hundreds of clients, we found that most are overwhelmed or scared to actually dive into paid advertising. And this podcast is here to give you the cheat codes so you can flourish with your social media channels. Join us and follow along as we continue to learn, apply, and share proven strategies as well as give you the insights on how to win online with social media paid advertising. And now, here's your hosts, Chris Baden and Sean Malone. But what I wanted to share with you guys tonight is actually the time that I personally got to watch Aaron speak. And while he's, yes, he has the results and we all focus on results, he had a really powerful and interesting take on, on results and how you should view them and where like generating results even come from. Like this, pers- his perspective, like I think of this, check this out. Think about how many millions of dollars and hours have gone into perfecting this tool that we all use. He's had years and hours and experiences that have refined his approach of knowing ourselves and how we show up in the world. And that's what you guys are going to get to learn and take with you tonight. And it's going to be crazy powerful. So please help me welcome Aaron tonight. Aaron, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having you guys. I'm so excited. Ever since I met you guys, the first, like, the moment I met you guys on the first Zoom call, I was like, yes, these guys, these guys right here, these guys. It was just, it was a knowing, you know, and it was a feeling, which is what I'm going to talk about tonight. I'm going to talk about that interconnection, how to connect to it. Now, before I get started, guys, I want to make sure that, now, I know this is probably redundant because you're digital geniuses, but I want to make sure that you are not multitasking, that all your windows are closed on your computer. You're not looking at Facebook. You're not scrolling. You're actually 100% present with me right now. I'm sure you are, again, because you're digital geniuses, so it's redundant, but I thought I would bring that up, and I want you guys to be open tonight, okay? I want to frame this a little bit with the word triggers, Okay, typically what happens in life is when somebody is talking, and this can be when you were presenting, there can be triggers in you based on how they react to you, there can be something they said that triggers you, there can be something that I say tonight that will trigger you. So what I mean by that is you step out of what we're talking about, you step out of the moment and you step into your story about what triggered you, okay? So I want you guys to be aware of that tonight. And I want you guys to commit from this day forward that you will become more and more aware and expand your awareness of where you're triggered, on how you're showing up, how you're flowing through life, how you're getting distracted, how you're not present, how you're stuck in the past, how you're projecting into the future, okay? And I want to frame that tonight because I am going to trigger you tonight. I know I am, uh, just because I know I'm going to cause a lot of thought and possibly confusion. And guys, realize, no matter what arises in you, it's perfect. It's exactly what's meant to arise. If it's painful, if it's frustrating, if it's confusing, guess what? That's awesome. It's a gift. Life is saying, here you go. Here's something to work through. Here's where you are not yet free, okay? Here is a gateway, a path to more freedom and peace and ease in your life, okay? So those things that are struggles and frustrating that you want to push down, let them out, man. I wake up every morning before I get out of bed, take a deep breath, know that I'm present. I say, where am I not yet free? Bring it on. Sometimes during the day, I'm like, why did I say that? Because things come rushing at me, okay? But I'm open to them, okay? So I wanted to frame that with this. Be aware of your triggers. I want you guys to take a deep breath right now. Be totally centered with where you're at. I'm going to try not to look at all the the questions and stuff. I'm going to move this over because I have the screen over here, guys. All right, and I'm going to share some slides here with you guys uh, for some visuals uh, that will help solidify some new neural pathways. Okay, I'm going to get into that for a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to discuss an overview, basically, 
a little bit of a dive. Excuse me. Oh, let's go back. Guys. We don't want to. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at how I'm showing up and flowing, guys. I got to start my slideshow over again. All right, I'm going to go through a little bit of a dive with you guys on what I'm going to be creating or am creating rather for Digital Genius Labs. Okay, it says pausing is, is can you guys see my slides or no? Real quick. Yeah, you're good, yeah. brother. Sharing is paused, just making sure. I, it's showing your whole PowerPoint and everything, so I can see all the slides on the left and your main one. Let me stop share real quick and let me start share again. And guess what, guys? Sometimes when you're presenting, you're going to have to start over. All that good stuff. So, okay. So, I'm going to go into a little bit of a, a, a dive tonight, but not super deep. But to a lot of you guys, this will be super deep. It's going to be new. So, I mentioned neural pathways. I want you guys to understand that what you have been doing in life is fine. It's just simply a path you've been treading scientifically and biologically, meaning a groove in your brain has been carved through repetition, a pathway in your brain, a neural pathway has been carved through thought, action, what you speak to the world, rep repeated over and over and over again. It carves a groove. So there's nothing wrong with anywhere you guys are at. It's just simply, you know, you guys, some of you guys are aware it's like, why do I keep doing the same thing? Why do I keep doing the same thing? Well, it's biological. You've conditioned yourself to do the same thing. So when you can remove your, you know, your story about it and realize, oh my God, it's biological. So how do I change it biologically? Well, you just carve a new groove through repetition and consistency like you carved the new groove, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so know your why, know your way. This is something I'm gonna deep dive with you guys uh, later in the trainings where it's broken down in a systematic way where you will fully understand what I'm saying here and I will guide you through how to find your why. Now, some of you might go, I already know my why. When, when and if, or when or if I challenge that tonight, I want you guys to be open. Just be open, okay? Be open to expanding wider, diving deeper into yourself. That is what I've done for years and years of my life, and I constantly do that, okay? I'm constantly seeking that. All right, so <clears throat> let me back up a second to a couple of years ago where I had uh, a very successful gym business, brick and mortar business, and the objective was 10 gyms in 10 years with that plan. I had some other gyms that had opened. Uh, my daughter's mother and I were working there. She was there with us. Everybody was like, oh my God, it's so awesome that you have your kids at work with you, and I wish I could bring my kids to work with me, and I would nod my head, and I would go into my office, and I'd cry. Okay, why? Because I still was spending my evenings and my days having people come into the office and guess what Berlin did and showing me pictures and videos, even though she was in the next room or out in my gym that I could see through the glass windows, guys. I was not doing what everybody thought I was doing. And it was tough whenever they called me out. It was hard. I'd say, yeah, you're right. It's awesome that she's here, but I still wasn't there, guys. I was spending so many hours that the, the financial freedom was growing, but the time freedom was also growing in the wrong direction. It was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So with that, I decided in uh, September of 2016, so it's been three years now, wow, three years ago, to just walk away, to step out of it, downgrade my income, because we were working there full time, so downgrade my income significantly, had no idea how I was gonna, gonna replace it. The only thing I did know is that I needed to, I needed to in a way that I knew I needed to, be a dad to this little girl and be there for her and be a full-time dad. And I made that commitment and I decided that I would not do anything. I would not choose anything that compromised that commitment to myself and to her and to my family, okay? All right, so when I was getting ready to do this tonight uh, and, and there was talking, I, I decided to add another picture to this slide. Now, I wanna add you guys that life isn't always easy, okay? And I just approach it knowing that no matter how painful or frustrating it is, there's lessons and there's blessings there for me. Life is happening for me, never to me, okay? With that, I've learned to see the blessings and the lessons as they arise, not necessarily hindsight is 2020. after I go through the process of making everything wrong and cursing at it and saying it's horrible, uh, and then finally saying, oh yeah, okay, I can see the blessings now and having to work through that thing called regret. I've gotten to the point now where I do not have any more regrets and I no longer form regrets. And again, that doesn't mean the pain and the struggle isn't there, okay? I show up to that now knowing that it's happening for me, knowing that there's no mistakes, knowing that there's no coincidences, unless you realize that coincidences is when two things coincide. So that's a confusing word, but I won't go down that rabbit hole tonight. Everything is synchronistic. Everything is happening for us, okay? So the picture I wanted to add here and the reason why is Part of what happened during that building of that gym 
and the building of a couple gyms was uh, my marriage got torn apart. Okay. Uh, not to go into too much depot, but it, it was horrible guys. It was painful. We ended up splitting. We ended up getting divorced. Okay. We ended up going down the path of, um, you know, <laughs> thinking each other's crazy. You know, it's all her fault. It was, her, it was all my fault. You know what I mean? Like, yet there was this little girl between us, you know, and a lot of parents use that between them. They play it, they play the kids against each other. And like, we constantly, even though it was tough, even though we were in a disagreement, even though we were sometimes volatile towards each other guys, cause we were okay. We both kept working on ourselves. We both kept working on ourselves. Okay. And, and, uh, some people never decide to do that. And so I added this picture and I was going to even, I was looking for just the picture, not the one that I had made and sent her. But this is what I made her. It says, our love um, is sharpened by the stone of our challenges and strengthened by the struggles of our growth. So um, I added this like literally in the beginning after the show started. I'm like, you know what? I need to, I need to let them see something full circle and let them know that some things are not always easy. Yet when you decide to grow, when you decide to walk through life and face your fears and no longer run away from them, guys, magic happens. Magic happens. It's tough. It's not easy. It sucks. You want to run, but magic happens. Okay. And part of that is you're seeing us uh, in Las Vegas when we're filming the initial part of the TV show um, that I'll touch on tonight back together. All right. After when nobody thought we would, and a lot of painful things happened between us that most people would never work through. So I just want to let you guys know that life happens for you. Okay. So I added that tonight. All right. So, all right, deep breath. Let's go into this. Okay. People are conditioned to believe that the solution is in what they do. Okay. So what do I mean by that? They think if they find the right business, they find the right program, they find the right tools, they find the right systems, they find the right significant other, they find the right town to live in, they find the right state to live in. Sometimes they even go for a country because they've, They've continued to show up and it's been uh, wherever you go, there you are. So now they're going across the pond. You know, I've known people like that who literally continue to try to find the what, find the solution in the what. Okay. Now what you do, of course, it's important. You do want to know it. And honestly, that's one of the things I love about, love about uh, what Sean and Chris and the wives and Mama Malone, because she's been brought into the conversation many times when they've talked to me about how they created DGL. Guys, DGL is by far the most cutting edge system that I have ever experienced, meaning literally experienced going through it and ever seen or vetted. It's nuts. Okay, so the what is important. So know that you guys are in a great what, but how you show up and flow through that is going to be the key to your success. So what I mean by that is you can have the best tools. You got them. Okay, you can have the best leaders. You got them. These guys know what they're doing. They've been doing it for a while. They constantly refine. They are givers. They are servant. They have servant hearts, right? It's all there. Yet you still have to show up. You still have to show up and flow through it. And that determines your success. So that's what I mean by saying it's not the what. It's how you show up and flow through it. Any relationship you get in, any exercise program, if you fail the kickboxing, you think the golden, the golden goose is at the, the Pilates studio, guess what? It's not going to be until you realize that is how you show up and flow through those exercises that's going to give you the results. Okay, let me dive into that a little bit further. Let's get a little biological here. Let's talk about responsive and reactiveness to life. <clears throat> okay, so we are conditioned. Know that. Remember, back to what I said, the, car, the brain has been carved with a groove treaded path. You've constantly done something through thought, through action. We've been conditioned to be reactive in life. What do I mean by that? We're going through life. Okay. And we're bucketing things as I call it. We're saying that's good. That's bad. That's right. That's wrong. I like this. I don't like that. This sucks. This is great. And we think that if we find the what, by the way, we, we go along with it for a while and then we just get fed up and we get motivated to find out what, if I can figure out what to do, I'm finally going to get away from all those things I don't like and that are bad and that are wrong in my life. And I'll finally get to all those things that I know are good and that are great. And I'll finally be happy and I'll be happy and I'll be happy. Right. We think when we're flowing through reactively and judging everything, right. That if we find the right, what, then we'll be happy. Yet I know even some of you on here that I've even talked to have tried what after what after what, meaning business after business after business. And some of you have come to the realization that you are the constant in those businesses. Doesn't mean there wasn't problems in the businesses, but you are the constant, okay? How you showed up and flowed 
is the key factor to your success. When we're flowing reactive, we are actually in a state of avoidance. I don't like this, this is bad, what do I need to do to get away from it, I'll finally get this. We are setting the foundation basically faulty from the word go, okay? Now, again, don't make yourself wrong if you're there or you're making decisions you're like, he doesn't know my story, I need to do this, I gotta, I'm in a state of survival mode, that's great. You are fed up, that's awesome, that's great, I believe that. So don't make yourself wrong for that, okay? Yet when you, when you come to life, whatever it is, when you come to a business opportunity like what we're doing here, with fear and avoidance, I know people are like, oh, I'm not afraid. Guys, just listen. These are triggers. I want you guys to note those triggers for yourself, okay? And I'll happily walk through them with you. When you're avoiding and your foundation is to avoid and that lays the foundation and you want to go over here and get to what you want and you found the what out of avoidance, you are starting basically with one foot in the grave, to put it bluntly. Okay, now that can shift at any time. You can become aware of what I'm saying at any time. Sometimes you'll have to go back and literally unravel some of the things you did to be able to move forward. Sometimes you just need the awareness and boom, you move forward. Okay, but know that when you're reactive in life, when you're basically judging everything is good, bad, right, and wrong, and you're making your decisions based on that, you're actually doing it in an unconscious state that's been conditioned. Okay, so what does responsive to life mean? Responsive means that we respond, we realize, okay, sure, I don't like this about my life, I've avoided it, I, it sucks, but I'm, I might, you know, I might get to the point where you realize you're recreating it, right? And you say, okay, where am I personally responsible here? How did I co-create this? How is this drawn into my life? Because remember, everything happens for you. Everything happens for you. And anywhere that you are avoiding, where there's regret, there's shame, there's guilt, you simply just miss the lesson, you misunderstood that moment of your life. And when it comes back up again, it's a gift from life, God, universe, whatever you guys choose to call it. It's life saying, here, you missed the lesson in this. You missed the blessing. I'm going to bring it up again. I know you want to run from it, but I'm going to keep bringing it up until you decide that you want to actually take a look at it, okay, and work through it, okay? So when you're responsive, you bring in personal responsibility into the mix. Now, that means what's tough, and guys, this is a process, okay? I'm not making you wrong for wherever you're at. Typically, people are in one of three different levels of consciousness victim mentality where literally they're a leaf in the wind and everything is against them people circumstances the weather their car their job they're a victim to all of it rarely are people there very long or in a lot of ways usually through life we get to a point where we're like you know what whether you read it in a book you heard somebody say it i can't control life i can't control circumstances or others but i can control the way i react to it that is a very empowering level of consciousness. Perfect, great place to be, yet it's not the end. It's not the deepest, okay? Because we're still separating stuff. We're still blaming. Now we just feel we need to protect ourselves, okay? So when we're victims, we blame everybody. There's peace and ease there for a while. Doesn't work. Then we get down to that deeper level where we realize we cannot control others or circumstance, but we can control how we react. New level of freedom, new level of empowerment, right? Yet at some point, guess what happens? We don't react the way we wanted to. Now, we're not only blaming other people that we're protecting against, but we're blaming ourselves. And that level of consciousness breaks down as well. Again, for you, personal responsibility. I'll go into a deeper dive in the trainings, guys, but personal responsibility, no one is to blame. No other person is to blame. You are not to blame. You just realize how you've showed up and flowed and these results that you are wanting to avoid, you take personal responsibility in the co-creation of them. Okay? So... Real quick, you have your neocortex. That's a part of your brain. It is full of the 26-letter alphabet, unless you're from a different country and you got more letters and, or less letters. Okay, I'm talking about English right here. 26 letters, neocortex. Then you have the limbic brain, okay? The limbic brain is where you have feelings and you have emotions, okay? The limbic brain connects to your heart. There's actually more signals scientifically proven sent from your heart to your brain than your brain to your heart, okay? So to talk about reactiveness and responsiveness. Now, take note for the yourself and take note for this for how you're marketing because I'll bring that back full circle in a second. When you're going through life, this is right, this is wrong, this is bad, this is good, something is bad, in your brain where the neocortex, where you have the language, you judge. You don't judge in your feeling brain, in your limbic. You judge where the language is. You don't judge in your heart. Your heart doesn't have any letters or alphabets either. It's all in that neocortex. Coming through this way, you judge it as bad, which creates an emotion that doesn't feel good, which literally makes you close to that situation. 
Physically, you close. You might feel nauseous. You might feel pain in your chest. You might, whatever it is, you close. Now, let's look at the other way. Going through life. See something you like. Feels good. You judge it with your languaging as good. Creates a different emotion. You open to life. Okay? That's the reactive state. Now, responsive, where I'm at, I am always open to life. Because when I am triggered, I realize it's where I'm not yet free. And I have some personal responsibility to work through. Okay? So I flow from the inside out rather than the outside in. That's where I want to get you all to. Okay? Again, I know this is deep dive stuff, but we're going to go even deeper uh, when I do the trainings with you guys and I walk you through those trainings in another month or so. Okay? So what the heck is there an orange on this page for? I'm not going to tell you right now. You're going to have to wait to find out. I also have one right here. and We'll talk about it later. Okay. So the longest journey you will ever make in life is from your head to your heart. Some people, you probably have heard this before, that this is what I'm talking about. We've been flowing reactive. We stop here usually and we go there. We go from here. We react and we go. We don't get to here. Okay? Now, I'm going to say something and I want you guys to realize that you're going to be triggered and then I want you to take a deep breath and I'm going to keep going. <clears throat> okay? Nobody has ever, okay, let's say a relationship breaks down or a job fails or something like that. Nobody has ever suffered from a broken heart. They've suffered from a broken head. Expectations, attachments, not the heart, the head, the judgment phase. Now, I know that probably triggers some of you guys. You might be mad at me right now, which is cool. Take a deep breath. Say, you know what? I'm pissed in there about that. That sucks. I disagree. Put it on the shelf. We'll bring it down later. Okay? All good. All right. So the longest journey you will ever make in life is from your head to your heart. Why? Because you got to travel far enough to meet yourself. Okay? Up here has been conditioned. It's literally clouding who you truly are. You know, some of you guys might remember who you were before, you know, the world told you you needed to be. Right? Some of, you, some of you guys might not even know. I've worked with people who at a very young age had to step into things in life that caused them not to be able to expand their imagination, their dreams, and actually come up with those things. So they're doing it now. It doesn't matter where you're at. Okay? You need to travel far enough to meet yourself because you're the only problem you'll ever have and you are the only solution. You are the key to your success. You are the one piece of the puzzle that always needs to be there. Think about it, guys. You get a brand new car. It's awesome. Do you just sit in the driveway and enjoy it? No, you got to drive it. That's you showing up and flowing through that car. You, you know, get going with the magic with DGL and whatnot. Do you get, you know, you got your machine and stuff like that. Do you drink the, do you drink the water? Of course you do. You don't just look at it on the head at night and say, hi, how are you doing, K8? You drink the water, guys. You show up and you flow through that, okay? You are your only problem meaning your conditioned way of thinking, your reactiveness, your avoidance, and you are your only solution because guess what? Life presents all those things that you've avoided, you called regrets, guilt, shame, and guys, there's nothing wrong with those, okay? We all have them. I still have them. I'm still working through them. Life will continue to say, hey, here's this gift that you missed, that you forgot to unwrap. Let's unwrap it now because you are the solution. So when the past comes up in the present and it's fearful and it's painful, it's not meant to be avoided, it's meant to be embraced. All right, <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit more about this. These are words, oh, well, let me get first. Let me read this to you. Have, have you ever tried to rise above your doubts, figure out just what this crazy life's about, reach beyond the grind of living day to day, believe that maybe there's a better way, okay? Find the road to the things you left behind, the hopes and dreams that made you feel so alive, okay? This is part of the path to know your why and know your way. A lot of you might say, I don't even know. You might not remember. A lot of you guys might remember and, and immediately discount it because you've been conditioned to think that music or art or whatever that one is is just a hobby. It can't be my livelihood. It doesn't need to be your livelihood, but it can be fuel for your livelihood, okay? Shane touched on this earlier. Shane and I are both musicians, okay? We want to lead people back to their passions, to their gifts, to their talents, their God-given gifts that they are meant to serve the world with that they are denying for whatever reason. Guys, I did it too. I stepped out of music, you know, a handful of years ago because I needed to be a family man. It wasn't about me anymore. I had responsibilities. I had to put food on the table. Those things are all true, but they're never true when it's denying part of myself. And that was a tough one for me to learn. And I had to learn it before I was able to do music again. Okay. Which leads me to this. This is a picture of you seeing me sing this song of these words that I just shared with you. The song is called This Life. Okay. In the background, you see my daughter 
and I don't care if it's not legal at the moment, and my wife, right? You know, it doesn't matter what, okay, got it, right? So why is this significant, guys? One more story I want you guys to think about in who you want to help in your life. It can be your friends or family. It can be children that you want to have or already have. It can be your nieces and nephews. It can be your friends' kids. It can be your own kids. What you do, how you show up and flow through your life is what they learn, not what you say, unless it's in alignment with what you're doing. Okay, so let me explain that. Integrity, congruency means what you're saying, what you're doing, and what you're thinking are all speaking the exact same message to the world, to your prospects, to your friends, to your family, to my daughter here. When I knew she was coming in the womb, I would sit there and tell her, I will never clip your wings. I will cultivate your creativity and your imagination. I will support you in all your dreams and help you reach them and do everything I can to make sure that you show up in this life loving it from the word go and that I cultivate that in you and I never let you get broken like the world does, right? I was telling her that. Yet also at the same time, I had quit music. I had said I couldn't do it anymore because I couldn't have a family music at the same time. I had said I couldn't do it anymore because I needed to make money and I needed to be home with my daughter. I was denying myself in action and thought and telling my daughter not to deny herself. What do you think she was learning? This is a tough one for people to swallow, but this is important to understand because it shows up in your business too because everything is connected. Okay. If you are telling somebody in your business one thing and you are not owning it in yourself, Okay, you're afraid. You don't like to talk to people. You don't know what to say on the phone, anything like that, and you're afraid and you're not owning it. Okay, you're trying to avoid it and you open this space and invite somebody into it, and there is fear and doubt in that space that you're not owning. Remember, you're not personally responsible for it yet. You're still in denial. Well, I feel that way because of how somebody treated me in the past, or I feel that way because I had so many failures in the past. When you're bringing the past, and you're not personally responsible, and you're putting that fear and doubt in the space, and you invite somebody into it, they're going to have one of three reactions. They are going to be aloof, not care what you have to say. They are going to attack you, possibly, if they're a friend or a family, you know, and, and tell you you're crazy or wrong, and, oh, it's another scam, and this, blah, 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 right? Or they're going to defend why they cannot do what you're asking them to do, okay? Now, we do not control people. Yet the space we create is our responsibility. So now let's look at it a different way. When you are responsive to those things in yourself, your relationship with yourself is primary, okay? It reflects outside of you and to everyone else and everything else in your life. You're afraid. You have doubt. You don't know what to say. You don't know if you've gotten your presentation down. You don't know if your ad was good enough. You don't know what this person's going to say to you when you get them on the phone. And you own that and you, you feel the fear and you do it anyway. Is there fear and doubt still in that space you present? Absolutely but it has been transmuted to awareness, okay? With compassion because you've given yourself compassion. And I want you guys to test this because you'll be blown away. And people in, in, that I've been working with are now blown away when they fully understood this. Those same people that reacted to them in the past either attacked them or became defensive or didn't want to hear what they had to say. Here's what happened. They owned that fear when they went into that conversation. The person steps in and still says the same things. Remember, it's not what you say or do, it's how you show up and flow through it. She invited them into a different energy space, okay? They will come in, but done so many of these things before, and my, my tendency is to want to tell you you're crazy, but for some reason I'm inter interested, can you tell me more? Same thing, oh, you've done this before, I'm not gonna listen, are you crazy, come on. They're open now, they open to life because the fear and doubt is still there, but it's now surrounded in acceptance and allowance to be there, okay? A lot of times you'll find that you'll say, you'll like, you'll come across somebody and say, you know, I really want to do this, but I'm really afraid. I don't know how to talk to people. I'm not, I'm technically challenged. I don't know how to do it. And you know what you'll say that will be the most empowering thing that you can say is, you know what? I'm afraid too. And I'm figuring it out on my own. Let's figure it out together. You know, I'm not figuring it out on my own. I have this great community. Let's figure it out together. You will see people go like this from here to here to here to here you're opening them because you're being open, okay? Now, what you're seeing here, I want to tell you about this too. This is the Race to 100K. This is the TV show I was, I was uh, mentioning earlier. This is the theme song that I'm going to actually, because I didn't uh, know the protocol on how to do this, uh, at the end, through Shane or Chris, I'm going to get a link to them for you guys to download this song for free because I want you guys to have the song. It's called This Life, okay? 
And it is the theme song of this show. It's about showing up and flowing differently in life. It's a different kind of reality show. So let's talk about triggers for a second. A lot of people, even people on the show, have said, I don't like reality shows. That's not true. Huh? Guys, be honest with yourself. There's nothing you don't like or that you hate. You do not like your experience of it. Big difference there. Okay? So different kind of reality show because it's empowering. It's all about lifting people up and helping them show up different and helping them create new results in their life, guys. And we have 10 participants who are running this race, and we will be starting to air the show very shortly. So watch for that. Super inspiring stories already happening with these guys. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay? Thanks for listening to Digital Genius Radio. We'd love it if you could share our podcast with three others that you think could get some value from it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And remember, hit that notifications button so we can alert you for each new episode that comes out. You're on your way. You've gained knowledge and you've gotten smarter. You're becoming a certified digital genius. To continue on the right path, go to challenge.digitalgeniusradio.com and prove you have what it takes. Again, that's challenge.digitalgeniusradio.com. Enter your name and email and get started becoming a master of your own destiny.